focusing on Circotherium. Is this your first time meeting this concept? You can type Y for yes and N for no in the chat. A lot of no's coming in. Only okay, one. that's good. Okay, that's good. It means that we should have a good time and we should get through. So I should be talking to myself. This is not a webinar, so I'm not just gonna be here talking, talking, talking. I need you to respond in the chat and I need you to open your mic and talk, all right? Be comfortable to say to me, Miss, can you repeat that, please? Miss Adele, I didn't understand what you said. Feel very comfortable to stop me and ask for clarification, all right? There's a hand raised. Go ahead. Somebody raised their hand. Okay. No, you can proceed. Okay. Um, these are the things that you will need for this session. If you don't have them, I'm giving you one minute to grab them quick. You don't necessarily need the ruler or the protractor compass, sorry. You don't need the ruler or the compass, but if you have it, that would be great. Practice using it. So Ronan gets you a pen, a book, a pencil. You definitely need a calculator and a ruler and a pair of compass if you have it. If you have all your tools and you're ready to go, just type ready in the chat. All right, some people came prepared, man. I love that. All right. 30 more seconds of the persons who were unready, <laughs> not ready. By the way, if, you see me, if you're looking at my, my video, you see me looking away. I'm actually looking at another screen to look at the chat. All right. Good morning. Oh, I don't know why you're not hearing. I can't tell Mr. Carby, Miss Carby, Jayana, Miss Carby, why she's not hearing. All right, so here we go now. So we have a little speed challenge and you have to get up, you know. So, this is how the challenge works. So get ready on your mark. Get ready. And in one minute, I need you to get me these five things. I need you to get something that is triangular, something that's circular, a die, what you call dice, something with a right angle, and something with a Jamaican flag. The first person to come with these five things and show me on screen, I have a prize for you. So the one minute starts now. Something triangular, circular, a die, something with a right angle, and something with a Jamaican flag. 50 seconds to go. As soon as you come back with all of them, I want you to type, have it in the chat. And the first person to say have it, I will allow you to share on screen the five things. 28 seconds to go. Triangular, circular, a die, something with a right angle and something with a Jamaican flag on it. Ten seconds to go. Two, one, beep. The time is up. Who have it? 
haven't seen anyone in the chat that they have it. Nobody don't have it. Who have four? If you don't have five, who have four? Four of these items. <laughs> I have four. All right, Danny, go ahead, sweetie. Turn on your camera. And let's see. Can you spotlight Danny, sir? Here it is. Danny's camera is on. I'm not seeing. Um, I don't know how to spotlight it, but um. No, not no, you. To be. You don't have to. Sir, does did it for you. So come, show me the four things. So the one with the Jamaica flag is my mother's shirt. No problem. All right. Die really, but it's two in the bag here. So anyone? No problem. No problem. This is the triangle. I just open my jam, what you say. Great, and great. Where is she? I don't know if it counts. That's sir, are we gonna take that? Should we take that, guys? Is that circular? Oh. oh. Interesting. <laughs> nah, they said some two, two persons replied. One said no, nah, one said yes. All right. Um Jacquet. Jack Jack is so pronounced. If I'm if I chamber in your name, I'm so sorry. Two two one saying yes. Three two three two two. Three two one saying yes. Sorry. All right. Um Four. everybody saying yes. They agree. I think, some, I think somebody said I have four. Yes, oh, that was me. Denise. Oh. Yes. No, somebody else said something. All right. No, no, no it was the same, it. same, same young lady, Danielle Hamilton. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's so mm -hmm. Should I Somebody go ahead? Has... Yes, please. Okay. All right. So I have. Oh, this is Denise. Yes. Okay. You're seeing me? No. no, no, my camera is on. I don't know. Just okay, I've seen no, see no. All right, so I have my Jamaica sash with a flag. All right. My triangle, right angle, a circle. I don't know if this is capable or my <laughs> bottle circle. <laughs> so the only thing I don't have is a dice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So, Denise and who was the other person? Danny Hamilton. Denise and Danny, can you send your phone numbers, sir, in a private chat, please? And which service provider you're using? Your phone number is attached to. You just won yourself one hundred dollars call credit. Ah! Thank Share you. That with me. You're welcome. All <laughs> right. So send your numbers to Sir privately and your service provider. All right. Okay, awesome. So we're moving right along. Now that we got that out of the way, uh, today we want to look at the properties of parallel lines and the transversal and the angles that are fo formed between those. Um, we want to look at the properties of a cir of circles and circle theorem and ultimately solving problems using these properties. So we're doing a quick recap now. These are the th these things you should know already. So we're doing a quick rapid fire. So what is the size of ang the angle marked A? You can type it in the chat. And how did you arrive at that angle measure? Feel free to turn on your mic as well. How did you arrive at the angle measure, Denise? Chrishell, Chantel. How you know it's 125? What's the reason for making it 125? Can I go ahead? Go ahead, sweetie. 
So angles as a well, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So I added up 35 degrees at 20 degrees and I got 55. And I subtract 55 from 180 to get 125 degrees. Excellent. Thank you, ma'am. All right. As she said, wonderful. What about this angle, angle C? Uh, Danny Hamilton is hand is off. Go ahead, sweetie. You can unmute. Oh. <laughs> right. So my answer is eighty five for C, and I got that because first of all, all angles at that point is supposed to equal to three sixty, and you have one hundred five and eighty, and the right angle which shows that it's ninety. So I add those three together to get 275, and I subtract that from 360 to get the 85. There's one thing I did from the previous question, or I didn't do, and I'm going to enter and do it now. Is that 85 mangoes? Is that 360 dogs? 85 degrees. Thank you, ma'am. And for the persons writing 85, alone in the chat please to ensure that you're using your units and your explanation was right on point and perfect all right what about angle x and angle y let's start with angle x Remember, I need the reason. Okay, right. so I got I who, who is talking? Wait, oh, wait, who's talking? Okay, go ahead, Chantel. I got 54 because alternate angles are equal. Same thing as said angle. Okay. So there's a Z where, as I said, when T, V, T, V, I don't know how to explain it, but there's a Z there. And since alternate angles are equal, 54. All right, don't tell me for why yet. So I take in X. So Chantel is saying 54. I'm seeing Rihanna, who is also saying 54. Anybody else? And Chantel is saying they are alternate angles. Just going to draw the Z. Boom. Hey. Boom. Boom. Sierra said the 54 and Regina Carter 54 as well. All right. So Chantel, I believe, was saying that this angle here is equal to this angle here. Let me use a different color. Hey. Oh, me go on, sir. Me go on. <laughs> yes, but use the, what I don't use the, uh, what you call it, the zoom. The zoom. Oh, uh, the zoom one? Yeah, it's quicker, faster, efficient. You want to use it? <laughs> Isn't that what I'm using though? No, you're using the PowerPoint, but continue. <laughs> oh. You're using the one for the PowerPoint. Continue though. Um, Kill me. All right, thanks, Denise. Yeah. So there's all right, so I think we can... the same. Sorry, continue. All right. Okay. All right, so here's our Z and we have X up in the top corner here and 54 in the bottom corner here. I see Alicia with a explanation in the chat 
for why. Alicia, would you like to turn on your mic and tell us about why? You can go ahead, Alicia. She's not responding to my unmute button, unmute option or command. <laughs> She's saying that interior ang angles on the same side of the transversal add up, add up to 180 degrees. So Y would be 180 subtract 115, which is 65 degrees. Rihanna is also responding to Y with 65 and Regina. All right. We have a special name for those angles on the same side of the transversal. Anybody can tell me what are those? What is the name of those angles? Start with C. Co-interior angles. Lovely. Co-interior angles. All right, so just a quick review, just in, for, just in case you forgot. So when we have a pair of angles on the same side of the transversal and inside of the parallel lines, co-interior angles, like on the left side of the, my screen, so it might make a U or a sideways C. Well, C is sideways, but a weird shaped C and those sum to 180 degrees. Uh, if you have a pair of angles on the same side of the transversal and corresponding positions relative to the parallel lines, we call those corresponding angles. And they usually make a F shape, whether upside down, back way. As you can see on the right side of my screen in orange, they usually make some form of F shape. So uh, angle six and angle two would be corresponding. Angle one and five would be corresponding and so on. You have to remember these properties, you know, because they will come back, all right? And those angles are usually equal. Then when you have a pair of angles on opposite sides of the transversal and inside a pair of parallel lines and shaped as in a Z shape like we discussed with X angle just now, we call those alternate interior angles represented on the left here and as we would have previously done and those are usually equal. Also, when you have a pair of angles formed between two intersecting lines, doesn't have to be parallel, and they make an X line. They have to be parallel. So when you have the parallel lines and the transversal, sorry, parallel lines and transversal, and there's an X that is made as represented on the right side of my screen, then you will get vertically opposite angles all right so if you don't if you never remember make sure you remember we'll be taking screenshots you know and having the information and can, please? sorry say that again can you go back please just one second i'll go back to the other slide right there yes miss you can move now thank you Okay, you're welcome. All right, and I hope we have the screenshot of this one. Please hold on. Holding on, Sierra, holding on. Um, excuse me, Miss. Yes, dear. About the very first one, please. When you Sorry? The very first one that you did. The question or the yeah. words? No, man, the words that you're doing now, the first one. Oh, the U shape one. Oh. There it is. All right, screenshot taken. Yes, miss. Thank you. 
You don't have time to write down the notes, you know. So you have to use the technology at your advantage this morning. All right, so we would have we would have gone through these and we got our answers. All right. Here we go again. What would be the size of angle D? Nothing in the chat to notice it. Angle D. Nobody? Somebody's hand is raised. You need to change um, the name of your, that appears on your Zoom. Regina had said 248, she's not sure. Mario 124. Uh, some Somalia, uh, no, that's not pronounced right, but sorry, 125. <laughs> uh, Thompson said 124, Hutchinson said 124, Moya 112. Somebody's hand is raised, I think. You can go ahead. I think they put down their hand, man. I think it was oh. a Samsung, one of the Samsung devices. Yes, yes. I uh, asked to rename them and they haven't responded. Is it? Oh, okay. How? What's the rationale for the 124? Let me choose somebody. Dijanay. Is that your pronounce name, Dijanay? Bunting? Is Peter Bunting a father? <laughs> I want to... <laughs> I want you to tell me how you get got 124. Turn on your mic and tell us how you got 124, please. You can go ahead, Bontin. Oh, yes. So on a parallelogram, um, the sides are parallel. So if A is 56, then C would be 56. And then 56 plus 56 would have been... Um, then 360 take away from 112 is 248 no we're going to split the 248 into two and then we get 124 sorry sweetie pie we think you kind of did last me oh kind of did last me a little bit say that again one more time okay miss on a parallelogram, the sides on or are in. parallel. Oh, on, so, okay, sides are parallel, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, miss. So if A is 56, then C would, would be 56. Why? Then, okay. Because the sides are parallel. So how the sides being parallel make the angles equal? It's not as Because clear. they're the same. How come? I don't know. <laughs> I think Jody and had said she had the same, she did the same thing. And Rashida okay. put her hand up. So which one do you want to take? All right, let me let me hear Rashida for a minute. Rashida. Good morning. Okay. Um, Good morning. So what I did was so angle B A D C is a it makes a U. So what all I did was subtract 56 from 180. And I got the 124. And what about the U again? B, A, D, C makes a no, U. No, what about the U? What is the U? What is that U? That U, that U is not a mathematical concept. What's the mathematical concept for um, that U situation? The, um, the first one in angle. You sure? Wrong C word. Co-interior. Lovely. Sorry. Right C word. <laughs> <laughs> right c word so a and d would actually be co-interior angles because as uh, i was talking to dijane rightly said we have some pairs of parallel lines this is actually a parallelogram 
And we know that with parallel lines and the transversal, some special angles are formed. So what actually happens is that because the, the, we have the parallel lines there, angle A and D would now form co-interior angles, which sum to 180. So that would be 180 subtract 56. All right. I also just want to point out that not because the lines are parallel suggests and, and a quadrilateral is formed suggests that the angles are equal. All right. Okay, somebody is burning bush and I am slightly suffocating. All right. So let's try a CSEC question now. With that information, let's try a CSEC question. What would be the value for angle X? And CXC normally asks you for a reason. So if you calculate an angle value, you have to give a reason why that angle value is the value that you decided, all right? So you can't just do the maths, you have to have the reason behind the maths. So you need to know the names of the types of angles and what is the criteria for that type of angle, meaning do they sum to 180 or are they equal? So you have to know these little things, right? So angle or whether it angles in a triangle, angles in a quadrilateral, angles at a point, angles on a line, straight line that is, whatever the criteria is. So talk to me about angle X. All right, Mario said 180, but Mario, you need to give a reason why. 180 it? what, Mario? 180 dumpling? 180 toenail? Okay, it's not 180. It's 80 what, 80. Mario? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mario. And Price said 52 degrees. Chantel, uh, Regina said JL is a straight line, so X plus 128 plus 52. All right, that's equal to, I don't remember. Uh, co-interior angles add up to 180, Alicia, Jody answered. Which 52. angles are co-interior, Alicia, to X? Oh, yes, she said equal to 52. All right. Until you had said 52 degrees. Everyone is giving answers, but not necessarily, the values, but not necessarily but not the, the explanation. Yeah, the reason. Can I explain my own? Price, Chantel Price. Chantel Price. Okay, so my reason is that angles on a straight line add up to 180. So I subtracted 128 from 180 to get 52 degrees. All right. That indeed is correct, too. Thank you, ma'am. And Mario, just to interject, okay. Mario had said the reason why he got his answer because opposite angles add up to 180. What opposite angles that Mario. Mario opposite angles wear? Maria, yeah, make up things. Opposite angles in a what, Mario? It really angles on a straight line. All right. Here's another strategy I'm going to help you with when you are doing your exam. So when you get a diagram like this and you're asked to find different angles, when you find one, write it in on your diagram. So that gives you a better idea of what angles you are working with, what information you have, and what information you need to find. All right, what about angle Y now? Why is 128, Rashida Hall? Um, because angle Y and angle 128 are corresponding um, angles. Oh, so okay. 
All right. Okay, so one reason is that angle Y is corresponding to the angle, the other angle at G. No, well, technically it's not G. But the 128 beside the X. All right, that's one reason. Regina had said X plus Y is 180, uh, which is the sum of the adjacent angles. And then she further highlighted 52 plus Y plus 180. Then Y is equal to 128. Chantal Price said Y is 80 degrees. Co-interior angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. So 180, mine, well, 100 from 180 gives you 80 degrees. As from Chantal Price and Regina Parter. How you get 100 to be subtracted? Where is the core interior formed? That's Miss Price, Chantal Price. Yes, remember the core interior is formed between the two parallel lines and the transversal. That 100 is not between the parallel lines. It is on one of the parallel lines. Well, both angles are on one of the parallel lines and not between the two. So, co-interior is right, but I want us to bear in mind that the co-interior angles would be Y and X. These would be the co-interior angles. Here is the parallel line GH, the other parallel line EF, and then the two angles forming between the two on the same side of the transversal would be X and Y. When we talk about co-interior angles. The 100 would co-interior with the angle that would be right here. All right, so Y could be corresponding or it could be co-interior. What about W? What about W? What about angle W? Nothing yet in the chat as it pertains to finding the angle. I'm realizing they're thinking about it. So we're giving them some time to think about their it. reasons. <laughs> Could I answer that one, please? Yes, please go ahead, sweetie. Okay, so you have angles Y and the angle beside it, which is 100. Mm -hmm. And if you take for using angles on a straight line, mm -hmm. you take 128 from 180, which gives you 52, and mm -hmm. that's on the other side. So that's right below W. Then you take 100 from 180. So wait, 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 sweetie, wait, sweetie. Let me, let me just write so people can understand. So you're saying that this angle right here would be 52? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, all right. Very well. And then... 100 from 180, which gives you 80. So this angle right here, boy, let's pretend like that is 80, that is not an eight. Then you're going <laughs> to add 52 plus <laughs> 80. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So you'd add the 52 plus the 80. And that gives you 132. So you're saying that now, angle W now is? So you're gonna, because in a triangle, the angle should add up to 180, you're gonna take 132 from 180, which gives you 48. All right, 48 what please, ma'am? 48 degrees. Thank you very much. There is another way, anybody can, did anybody do anything different? I'm seeing some 48s in the chat. 
how did you get 48? I see Regina is saying that W plus 52 plus 80 is equal to 180. Well, how did you get those 52 and 80, Regina? Did you use the same process as a notch? I Case, think I saw. I think it was Casian. Casian. Did you use the same strategy as Casian, Regina? Ciara, how did you get that 48? Me. Kayla, how did you get that 48? Chantel, how did you get that 48 degrees? Well, my, oh, it's kind of similar. I just looked at the bigger triangle, which is um, J and where the line G and H are. Um, okay. So it's like, okay, X is 52. And as huh? I explained earlier, that the current here for 100 would be the one where H is. So, uh -huh. like, so I automatically knew that the current term from 100 will be 80. So, so you're like, saying that this would be 80 right here? Yes, miss. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, or that I was in a triangle add up to 180. So I added up, add up 52 to 80 degrees, and I got 132, and I sub, sub, subtract that from 180 to so get 48. Excellent. I was hoping that somebody else saw that there were actually two similar triangles, the smaller and the bigger one. Fabulous. Excellent. Wonderful. All right. So that was angles between two parallel lines and a transversal. Remember, you have to remember the reasons and the types of angles because CXC is going to ask you to state a reason for Hello. your response. Yes, Hello. Kids. Kids. Hi, so he understand. Don't understand. Not a problem, sweetheart. Where did I lose you? Two other persons as well. No problem. Tell me where I lost you. Did you get I anger X? You. Are you okay with anger X? Yes, yes. Are you okay with angle Y? Yes, me. Okay, so angle W is the problem angle. Yes, me. Okay, no problem at all. Where's my cursor? I lost my cursor. Okay. All right, erase all. All right. So here, let me even take out the information. So here we have uh, this diagram here. There is a, sir, sir, leave me. Can you just do the demonstration for me, please? Oh, is it because I'm not sharing my screen? <laughs> oh, that is. Can it. I give you control of my screen? Yeah, sure. Is that possible? Let me see. How do I find what the, okay, all right. <laughs> Wait, no. Where is the where is the zoom? I'm not seeing even controls here. Yeah, I was looking for it as well. No, I can't. You don't see the annotation feature? Sorry, everyone, by the way. No, I'm not seeing that word either. That's why I was using the thing at the bottom. Oh, maybe this one doesn't have it. Well, let me check still. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not seeing all that at all. All right. So let me just go back to what I was doing. Where's the decoping thing? All right. So let me use the highlighter, the highlighter maybe. So all right. For the look at my screen now. So there are two um two similar triangles. Use the blue. So you have this little triangle right here. Boom. And then you have a bigger triangle, which would start from up here, coming straight down. Can you, are you seeing those two triangles? Let's start there, just type in the chat. Are what you seeing are those in? two triangles? Well, yes, they all said yes so far. Okay, awesome. No, there. So, with that being said, 
we can use either the information from the smaller triangle to find angle W, or we can use the information from the bigger triangle. So let's start with the smaller triangle. I believe it was Cassian who identified that we can find the base angles, which is this angle right here and this angle right here. We can find the values of these angles by using the properties of angles on a straight line summing to 180. We already have one half of the angle, so we just, other need, just need to find the other half. So if Y is 128 degrees, what would be the value of the other angle on that straight line? You tell me. You can type in the chat. Or turn on your mic, either one works. If one angle is 128 degrees, what is the other angle? If there are angles on a straight line. The angle at Y, remember, by the way. The angle at Y, yes. 128. So you're looking for the angle to the left. That Which would be inside of the triangle. Is it 52 degrees? How did you get 52? Because angles on a straight line add up to 180, so I minus. They yes. are right. The one one so, twenty eight from the one eighty. Excellent. So this angle right here would be fifty two degrees, right? All right. What about the angle beside the one hundred degrees? What would be the value of that angle? Uh. They're saying 80. Three How points. did you get 80 degrees? You can just turn on the mic and share quickly. Maya said 100 from 180 degrees. And what's the reason for subtracting from 180? Waiting on her to type or open her mic. Moi, you can open your mic if you want to speak. Or Xavier or Alicia. Xavier. Or any, well, only for the persons who were saying that they didn't understand. How did you get 80 degrees? Amelia had said all angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. I would want it to be a little bit press, precise, Amila, so they actually sum to 180 degrees. All right, so by nature of that, this angle here is 80 degrees. This angle in here, so. And is there another way of um, getting to that 80 degrees? Anyone? No? No. <laughs> All right. So I just, I'm just going to take, while you think about serious question, I'm just going to take out the triangle right here. So we have W here. We now have 52 here. Why am I writing? Not so fancy. And we have 80 degrees here. So if we have 52 and 80 at the base, how can we find the value of W? And then after we add the 50 to 180, Xavier, what, okay, then subtract from 180. Add them and subtract and tell me what you get, Xavier. Add 
Where is Kate? Kate, where are you? You're the one who asked me to repeat. And, and three others. Yes, where is Kate? Kate, is that clear? Yes, miss. Awesome. So that and was Kelsey. one way we, we found angle W and using Kelsey. the smaller triangle. Yes, sir? And Kelsey. Kelsey said she never understood as well. And Kaylee. Um, miss? Yes, Denise. Where did um where did um the 52 where it's supposed to be? What angle? Is the Y angle? It's not Y. Y is 128. It's the angle beside Y inside okay. of the smaller triangle. Okay, okay, because I'm not seeing it properly. Okay. That's why I redrew the triangle here. Uh, Cobb, I, why, why can't you subtract 100 to get the 80? I'm not, you're talking about the eight, this 80 degrees here. Let me draw a circle. Let me draw a circle. This 80 degrees right here you're talking? Because that's what we did. We did subtract. 100 from 180. I think Sir was just asking if there is any other way that you could get the 80 degrees. You are right. It is angles on a straight line. To get Y, why couldn't you subtract? Turn on your mic and talk to me, Cobb. Oh, oh, you mean that, um, okay, so you're asking why, why is 128 and not 80? Is that the question? Okay, because why is, co is a cotyria angle with X? which is 52 let me clear off the the thing margin here i lost my cursor oh i cannot find my cursor okay here it is erase everything all right, so earlier we spoke of the types of angles that are formed between two parallel lines and the transversal. Now, Y and 100 are not on the same straight line in terms of angles on a straight line. So this is one straight line here, so. And this is another straight line here, so. So they're on two different line segments. They're not, even though they're on this middle piece here, so this is not the line, angles on a straight line that we're talking about. So we're talking about JL and JK. We can only use a theory for those two line segments. So Y is, was actually co-interior with X. We already found what X was, which was 52 degrees. And so co, and we know that co-interior angles sum to 180. And that's why we subtracted the 52 from 180 to get 128. So I want you to, and I thank you for asking that question there. It's a common error that we make sometimes when we're trying to identify angles on a straight line, the angles must be beside each other and divided by another line segment, all right? So if you notice the Y and the 100, they are not beside each other or they are not, a line is not there dividing both angles. 
if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Cob. Okay, awesome. You're welcome. All right, so I just want to finish up this question now. Good morning. Good morning. This is Daddy here. Just a, a, a key word that sometimes you miss, it is adjacent angles on a straight line. So adjacent meaning adjoining, they must be side by side. They must be side by side. Yeah, and the key word is adjacent. Right. right. Remember that word. So Mrs. Darby, who is another one of our math coaches, is saying, so we're not just going to say angles on a straight line anymore. We're going to say adjacent angles on a straight line just to help us to not make that miss that error, right? So those angles must be separated by one or two or three, depending, uh, line segments. But they cannot just be beside each other like Y and 100. There must be a line segment separating them to make them um, have the property of summing to 100 degrees. All right, so finding WNO using the larger triangle of the two. I don't remember who explained, but that person would have explained that the we can find the angle, trying to change my pen color. We can find this angle right here by using the co-interior property. Okay, the co the uh, keyword is, uh, sorry, I'm looking in the chat and I'm talking at the same time. The keyword is adjacent. So the angles, adjacent angles on a straight line. They have to be adjacent, meaning they are on the same line, separated by another line segment, side by side. All right, so coming back now to the larger triangle, I hope I'm not confusing anyone. So we can find this angle here. We can use the co-interior method. Welcome. We can use the co-interior method. So. Highlight them. Trying to use different colors so you can see. Right, so these angles that are formed here would be co-interior, which would be the 100 and the red space. And we know that co-interior angles sum to 180 degrees. So if this angle here is 100 degrees, naturally this red space here would be 80 degrees. That's one way to find it. And we're going to use that way for now. And so if we write in that angle, oh, Jesus, I lost my cursor again. I don't know what's happening now. Where is it? Okay. Oh, it's yellow. Okay, I see why I keep losing it. Okay, here it is. So right here, you want to go black? <laughs> okay, the red works. It's just when it gets to yellow, that's the problem. So this angle right here would be 80 degrees. So if we're looking at the green outline for a triangle, we have 52 degrees at one side, 80 degrees at one angle, sorry, 52 degrees at one angle, 80 degrees at another angle, and then we can easily find what W is here. And it would have been the same 52 and the same 80 from the smaller triangle anyway. Is that clear? Kate, where is Kate? 
and the others who said that they did not understand. Akilia. Kate, I needed to tell me that you understand, please. Yes, Miss, I understand. Okay, lovely. Because I wasn't going to leave until you understand, you know. All right, so here we go. We're moving. So we, everybody, we got to our 48 degrees for that angle. Lovely. All right. Now we're moving on to circles. I want you to place in the chat the color and the name that matches the color. So what does the yellow part represent? What does the green part represent? What does the pink part represent? What does the blue part represent? And what the purple part represents. So I want you to say color and what it is. Edward said purple tangent. Xavier, pink diameter, as well as Rihanna. Yes, Jordan. Can you hear me? Yes, I am. I was going to answer. So, one. The Take green. One. Green. Mm -hmm. The card. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I'm seeing yellow for circumference. I'm seeing purple for tangent. Jody did say green is a chord. And I saw others saying green chord. Blue is radius. Pink is diameter. All right, so here we go. Lovely, wonderful. Red is origin. I didn't even realize that the red dot is there. Good yeah, eyes, Rachel. <laughs> Good <center>. eyes, Rachel. <laughs> or center. Origin or center. All right. Center of the circle. Very well. I'm the one who did it and I didn't even realize the red, the red dot there. Good eyes. Eating up your carrots. That's very good. All right. So when we talk about the circumference of the circle, we all know that's the distance along the boundary of the circle. And even though oftentimes we don't consider it, the circumference is actually the perimeter of the circle. Um, but the circle is so special that its perimeter has a special name. And all points on the circumference are equidistant from the center. So wherever you go on this along the circumference from the center is the same distance. And we call that distance the somebody open your mouth and tell me what's the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circumference that have a special name. The radius. radius. Fabulous. Radius. Fabulous. The radius. Excellent. We also know that the diameter is the longest chord and it is the distance across the circle passing through the center of the circle. Um, good this. morning, Miss Amia. Um, can I go back to the first one, Miss? This circle, this one? Yes, Miss. Is a picture you're taking, Annalise? Yes, Miss. Okay, lovely. Can go now? Yes, Miss. All right, fabulous. All right, spoke about the diameter. We know that already. We also know the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circumference. Uh oh, this shouldn't just come up in a, you were supposed to tell me this, but that's okay, Never mind. So when we, with the red portion, is the minor sector, which means that everything on the other side of the green cord, what would we call that? If the red portion is the minor sector, 
everything else on the other side of the cord, what would we call that? Major sector. sector. Major sector. Wonderful. Uh, the light orange portion that we call segment. You know, Islam, I tell you, red part is segment. Who oh, don't say that are talking foolishness? The red part is the minor segment. So everything on the other side would be the major segment. Then we have this pretty green, lime green, the minor sector, which means that everything outside of these two radii would be the major sector. Major sector. So tell me something. How can we distinguish between the segment and the sector? What's the difference between the two? How can you distinguish between the two? How do you know when it's a segment and when it's a sector? Go ahead, Dani. Um, from the picture I'm showing, from the picture that you're showing, the segment is like separated by a cord, while the sector is um is separated by radius or radii. Lovely, lovely. Sharika, the segment does not run on the cord, but the cord separates the segment. All right. Okay. So I basically, we basically spoke about that. We also have arcs, which is a part of the circumference, separated by a cord, as you can see. And we have minor and major arc as well. So the green portion would represent the minor arc, and the black portion would separate the major arc. So if you notice, when you have a separation, one part is minor, one part is major. Richard is asking you to repeat that difference that you stated earlier. Well, it's never me stated, you know. It's who stated. Can you state it again for Michaela? Who was the person who came on and shared? I did. Go ahead, Danny. What's the difference between the segment and the sector? Right, so the difference is that in a segment, it is separated by a cord, while in a sector, it's separated by two radii. Right. So our sector is formed by an arc and two radii, while the segment is formed by an arc and a cord. Miss, Miss Soraya, something that I used to help me remember is the orange sector goes with radius. Oh, the orange sector goes with radius. Okay. Well, we don't have any C in segment to go with. <laughs> no, okay, no, orange sector. One and then the other one is the other one. <laughs> So if we find one by the process of deduction, we can find the other one. Elimination, we can find the other one. Okay, all right. So all of this is what we said. Oh, and the tangent. We spoke about the tangent. We know that the tangent is one, where are the words? Okay, oh, I disappeared already. Anyway, the tangent is formed by touching one point on the circumference. It's a line segment that touches one point on the circumference. I know that it looks like it's more than one, but you know when you draw it kind of, you know, but it actually touches one point on the circumference. And we're gonna get to the tangent after lunch. Now, when we have triangles and angles and quadrilaterals constructed within a circle, we have some specific properties that is only applicable within the circle, some of them. So we're going to start now. But before, can you tell me what type of triangle is this that is formed in our circle? What type of triangle is this? Anybody? 
Anybody? Go ahead, Sharika. Is it the isosceles triangle? And what makes an a triangle isosceles? What is specific to an isosceles triangle? Miss, it has two equal sides. Aluan? That's Aluan? That is and correct. Two equal angles. Thank you very much. Two equal sides and two equal angles. And we usually say the base angles are equal, which is usually the angles that the triangles, triangle is sitting on. All right? So you are indeed correct. Bruce, fix up your argument. What does equal sides mean? All the sides are equal? All right, so now I'm going to show you, or I'm going to do a demonstration for you, and I need you to pay keen attention to what is happening when I'm doing the demonstration, all right? Okay, here we go. So what's happening to the angle at the circle? Oh, we're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. Not seeing oh, it. You're not, oh, I needed no. to share all of my screen. Yes. Uh -uh. Okay, I have to stop sharing and come back. Oh, wait. No, I can do it. Okay, all right. Now I don't have to stop sharing. You seeing it now? Yes, we are. Okay. I forgot that I needed to share my you want to zoom in a bit more? Control plus. <laughs> oh, all right. That should be fine. Everyone is seeing that properly? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. But fine. I'm not able to. Wait, I'm not Can't able to. Can't manipulate it? No, I'm not. All right, yeah. Let's press control um, plus. Zoom it in a bit. Control plus. Yeah. I am control plus in, but nothing is happening. I'm seeing the numbers going up. It's at 200% now. Oh, but but nothing is happening to the screen. Yeah, no. just zoom out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Better? Is that, is that okay, everyone? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can yes, thank you. Thanks All right. So I need you to pay keen attention to what is happening. What's happening at the circumference when I'm moving the points? What's happening at the center of the circle? What's happening when I move the angle from one side to the next? What's happening? And what it would like to share? What do you notice happening? What can you say about the angle at the circumference versus the angle at the center? The angle at the center is like oh, twice seven. as well. Candice in the chat had said that the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. Yona mm -hmm. said that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Okay. Somebody was talking, but I'm not sure what happened before Sir spoke. 
Anybody else make, make any other observation? I think it was Rich, Rich, Rachel that was speaking prior to me. Okay. All right. All right. Do I have to know? No, that's not. All right. So you should have noticed that there were two angles formed on the same chord, though it was imaginary. Both angles were tending from the same initial points from the center of this, not the center, circumference, sorry. So both angles came from the same points, but there was an imaginary chord there, as you can see at the bottom here. And as you rightly said, the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. So for those who are a little bit more visual learners, I'm going to label this chord A, B. So this is point A and this is point B. And when I connect them, I have the chord AB. And I'm going to call this angle C. And I'm going to call this angle, you know, that we normally call the angle at the center O, right? So angle ACB is formed from the same chord as angle AOB. Are you seeing that? Repeat, miss. So we have the chord AB. Are you seeing the chord AB? Yes, yes. All right. So we have our chord AB. And I'm saying that the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference are formed from the same chord. So we have angle ACB and angle AOB. Are you seeing that? Yes, ma'am. So when we have two angles being formed from the same chord and in the same segment, because remember the chord separates the circle into a minor and a major segment. So these two angles are now in which segment? Are, in the, are they in the minor or the major segment? Minor or major segment? Hello? Are the angles in the minor or major segment? Remember, we already established that the chord separates the circle into a minor and a major segment. So I'm asking the angles that we're looking at on screen, are they in the minor or the major segment? Major segment, lovely. So when we have That's two angles being formed from the same chord and in the same segment, they have specific properties. And the property is, as you rightly said, the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center, or the other way around, the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, or two times, twice, two times, same thing. So same chord, same segment, you will have this property happening. Angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Is that clear? Tell me if you don't understand what I'm saying. 
Can you repeat for me again, please? When you have two angles being formed on the same chord or tending from the same chord in the same segment, the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. As you can see, angle AOB, which is 88 degrees, is twice angle ACB, which is 44 degrees. Oh, so that's why they add up to the 88 degree because you're plus 44 and 44. Right, because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the right, circumference. Yes. yes, okay, thank or you. Or you can say the other way around, which the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. Half of 88 is 44. If that is clear, say clear. Yeah. Type clear in the chat. <laughs> Mr. Lee, New York. <laughs> All right. So, good. If that is clear, then here I have some examples. What would be the size of angles A, B, and C? Let's start with A. And remember, you know, every time you're giving me an angle, you have to tell me the reason. 244. What would be the value of angle A? I think I heard somebody said 244. 244 what? Mangoes? Sixty-one. How oh, you get sixty-one? Is that was that Jade? Yes, miss. Tell me how you got sixty-one. Sixty-one what though? Sixty-one degrees. Okay, how did you get sixty-one? Miss, I divide one is one twenty-two by two. So why did you divide by two? Yes, because the angle at the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. All right. That's a good start, but I don't want you to leave off a two very important things. They should they're tending from the same chord and they're in the same segment. You don't want to leave out though, that part of the information. For the persons who said 24 degrees, can you give me an explanation, please? Let me see what it's 24. Michaela, Rihanna, what's your rationale for 24 degrees? 244, actually. 244 degrees, what's the rationale? Miss, I did it wrong. Instead of dividing, I multiplied it by two. Okay. Oh, sorry. So you're, you're changing your answer? Yes, miss. Okay. I also want you to note, guys, separate and apart from your calculation, when you look, even though the angles are not drawn to scale, they are good representative of what the values of the angles sh should look like, right? When you look at the 122 degrees and A, is angle A smaller or in, in size, based on the drawing, is it smaller or larger than the angle at the center? Smaller. Smaller, which naturally means that you could not get a value that is more than 122 degrees. It had to be a value less. So I want you to be able to look at what you have so you 
if you get an answer, you can decide to yourself, okay, this don't look right based on what I am seeing on screen. You understand what I'm saying or on your paper? So separate and apart from knowing the theories, you also have to have a good level of estimation. Right? So as I don't remember who spoke, rightly said, the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So if the angle at the center is 122 degrees, to find angle A, they simply divided by two. Very good. What about angle B? Destiny with the quick fingers. And Rihanna. Lovely Khadija. Remember, you have to be able to give your reason for your answers. This part of the CSEC paper requires you to give a reason. It, and the reason has a mark. So if you give the answer alone and you don't put the reason, you lose one mark because the reason has a mark to it. So I'm seeing three persons responding in the chat. What happened to the others of you? What's, angle, what's the value for angle B? Come on guys, angle B, don't fall asleep on me. Amelia, you want to tell us how you get 128 degrees? Yes, miss. So to get 128 degrees, I multiplied 64 by 2 because the angle that is uh, below, is it touching the coin like that, is 2 times uh, the angle at the top. So what is below? The angle that is below, What it, where is below located? It's okay to that very specific place. Uh, angle B touching the cord. No, man, it's, it start with a C, well, not cord, another C word, little dot in the middle. What does that represent? The center. Right, so the angle at the center is, continue. The center is two times the angle on the circumference. On the circumference, lovely, very good. 128 degrees is indeed correct. Last angle, angle C. Okay, five, one, two, three, four, five responses. Five out of 155 is not a good number. I need some more responses. We have a little bit of time leave for preparation for CSEC. So I need you to be paying attention and getting as much as you can get out of the session. Don't walk, leave your devices or over there on Instagram and TikTok. All right, 39.5 degrees. As we already know, the angle at, this, at the circumference is half the angle at the center in the same segment, subtended by the same chord. All right. Lovely. All right. So just in case you want to take a picture, let me just put it back. If you're taking a picture, take it quick.
I'm going to do another demonstration and I want you to look at the screen again and tell me what you notice. Oh, I know I can't find my cursor. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, we are. Okay, tell me what you noticed. The angle of B doesn't change. It remains 90. Okay. What 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 about what else are you, what other parts of the circle are you seeing present? Somebody said angle in the semicircle is 90 uh -huh. degrees. All right, so we have a semicircle happening there. Where is that angle located though? And someone had highlighted that the angle formed in a semicircle is always 90 degrees. And where is that angle formed? That statement is incomplete. Where do I find that angle? Angle subtended by the diameter of the circumference is 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I love that. Yes, man, use up the big words and make, make we know say you're bright. How we know say you're bright? Angles in a but semicircle. Oh, sorry. Angles in a semicircle made by the diameter is 90 degrees. Okay. I still want to know where in the semicircle a very key word is missing. Where is the angle located that measures 90 degrees? Is it on the circle and, oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I need that word, thank you. Because okay. there could have been an angle that was not drawn to touch the semicircle. It could have just been inside of the semicircle and not on the circumference. So you have to be very specific. But is, I'm going to ask a question though. Are you seeing a relationship still with the previous? theory that we looked at? What's the measure of the angle at the center? One hundred and eighty degrees. And what's the measure of the angle at the circumference? Yeah. Nine. So does the theory still holds true even when we have a semicircle? Yes. yes, yes. So is it is, is the angle at the center still twice the angle at the circumference? Yes, Subtended yes. by the same chord in the same segment? Yes, yes. Excellent. Yes, it, yes, it does. So we call that one special because it's a semicircle. And as you rightly said, the angle formed at the circumference will always be 90 degrees. But it is coming from the same theory that we discussed just now. You want to take that screenshot? Alrighty. All right, I'm going to another demonstration and I just want it to look good now. See my screen? Yes, we are. You can enlarge it or full screen like what you did earlier. That's good? Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that should be okay now. All right, lovely.
Tell me what you're noticing. If the angles are equal. All right, but I need some more information. What other parts of the circle you're seeing? And the equal, but how? What's the, what's the, if you were to make up a theory, tell me, what would be the theory? Miss angles made by the same chord are equal. All right, so what's the name of this chord in this instance? There are some letters there. What's the name of the chord? A, B, C, D. No, man, the chord are two points alone. Miss A, C. A, C, lovely. A, C, which would be here. I can't draw because I'm not in um, PowerPoint, but we would have A, C right here. So there's an imaginary chord, remember this? So when you get a CXC paper, you can draw upon it to make it make sense to you. So there's an imaginary chord at AC, yes. And who was talking to me? Come, come, finish talk now. So there's an imaginary chord at AC and you are saying that the angles, finish the statement for me. Miss, um... The angles that are made by chord AC. Mm -hmm. are right. So the something is something else is missing, and I saw somebody in the chat saying it. Well, there's another part of the circle that I need you to make mention of. Where are the angles formed? Where are they as it relates to the part of the circle. circle in the? On the circumference. All right, circumference is one, right? So the angles are formed on the circumference, yes, but they are also somewhere else in the circle. So remember, the segment. segment, lovely. So we are, let us tidy it up now. So you're saying that the angles Subtending from the same chord, and we're going to call the chord AC in this case, angles are formed on the circumference in the same segment are equal. Equal. equal, lovely, excellent. So let us go back over here. So now, oops, come on, over here and tidy up. So when you have, let me label my chord. When you have, so I'm calling my chord AB yet again. When you have a chord AB and you have some angles subtending from that same chord on the circumference of the circle in the same segment, they are equal, as you rightly said. So as long as they stay in the same segment, you notice when I was demonstrating and I moved the angle in the minus segment, the value changed. As you can see on screen here, we have, let me label this one. So we have the angle A, C, B, but it is not as the other two angles because it is in the other segment. Even though it's coming from the same chord AB, it is in the minor segment No, So it would not be equal to the angles in the major segment. The angles must be in the same segment on the same chord. Is that clear? Clear? Repeat. So when you have angles subtending from the same chord, and we're calling that chord AB to the circumference of the circle or on the circumference of, of the circle, in the same segment, they are equal. So I'm going to call this angle. No, not up there. So. So I'm going to call this angle here D. 
And I'm going to call this angle E. So we're saying that angle, angle A, D, B is equal to, that is not equal sign, is equal to angle A, E, B. You see that angle A, D, B is equal to angle A, E, B. But angle A, C, B is not equal to the other two angles because it is in the other segment. They must be in the same segment. Even if they are subtended by the same chord, they must be in the same segment. Very important. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So with that information being said, what is the size of angle A and B? But let's start with A. Look carefully, don't get distracted now. Or let's start with B, I think it's B or A. Either one, tell me both of them. 44 degrees for A. Are you sure? What about B? I need some more responses, man. There are too many of you for me to get in three and five and four responses. I see you, DeAndre. I see you, Destiny, and Xavier, and Danny, and Michaela, and Dan. I said Danny and Michaela already. And I said Danny already. Ashley, Akila, Ciara. Sarah, which letter are you responding to, A or B? <laughs> Amelia. I see you're giving me numbers, but you're not giving me any reason, you know. I need to practice saying the reasons. Ashley, you're telling me? Because they are adjacent angles. Adjacent to what? Oh, we get adjacent. Who said that? Um, Ashley Anderson. Uh, DeAndre, Ashley, oh, yeah. DeAndre said 28 degrees for B because angles formed by the same chord in the same segment are equal. Big up you, John DeAndre. Sharika Johnson has a razor. And I don't know if Why you want Sharika to um, I would like to give my explanation for my answers. Go ahead, go right ahead. So the there's a there's an imaginary chord forming at the angle A and the angle 44. So the angles subtended from that will be equal. So 28 would be angle B and vice versa. So uh, there's an imaginary chord forming at angle B and angle 28. So angles subtended from that will be equal. So A will be 44 degrees as well. Lovely. You forgot the part about the same segment. But we take that. You can get marks for that. Good girl. So I'm going to do it again. Sherika, your hand is raised again. 
No, that was an accident, sorry. Okay, no problem. So as just in case you missed it, Sharika said that there's an imaginary cord. I'm going to name my cords. There's an imaginary cord here, and you know I love a good AB. Imaginary cord at AB, and we have, let's call them angle C and angle D being subtended into the same segment. So oh, naturally, me. if... Um, I just want to ask a question. Um, when would you know that there's an imaginary cord? Because if you you can see that the... the uh, oh, let me use... Okay, look. You can realize that... See the line? Just look at where the line segments are coming from. The points at which the, oh, that one very lean. The point at which the line segments are coming from. So you know that ang angles are formed between two line segments, yes? So look for the starting point of those line segments, and that will be your chord. Thank you, Miss. You're most welcome. Right, so naturally, because we the both angles C and D were formed from points A and points B, which naturally formed the chord AB, we know that these two angles are indeed equal because they are coming from the same chord formed at the circumference, very important, at the circumference in the same segment. Naturally, they are equal. Then we had the imaginary chord CD. And if you look again, you realize that angle A and B, the points at which their line segments start that form the angles are lying on the chord CD, which naturally makes A angles A and B equal. Yes. 